So, it's the last weekend of the month, which means it's time for uh, another Shroud of the Avatar release. I'm in Soul Town, which is the uh, starting location if you're a new player. There have been some improvements to the uh, new player process, but since there's not been a wipe, I'm not going to investigate any of that right now. Um, I think one of the things is you can now run up the river from um, Solace Bridge, the starting area, to Soul Town. But we'll, uh, we'll not worry about that for now. So, one of the changes in this release is that they're, uh, instead of just leaving uh, NPCs dotted randomly around the map, they're actually now all located in uh, in pavilions or you know in in the in shops somehow. Like the merchant is not standing on the street anymore, somehow hiding all his vast amount of goods in the cloak, and uh, Annika the blacksmith is sitting over there now. Apparently in this release all the trees in Soltown are speed trees. I, uh, I've not investigated the uh, the technical details of all of that stuff, but they, we are looking at speed trees when we look at those trees shaking around in the winds. So I'm going to head on out of town, if I find my way in the dark. Um, Just someone's house, I think. Looks like it. Let's carry on heading out of town. Now there is an interesting, uh, interesting thing on the way out. Again, if I find it, related to the uh, NPC placement I was just discussing. Let's see. We'll keep going. Right, so, all these tents up here, now you know that the plot of the game is that, um, is that um, Silas Bridge has been attacked, that's where you start the game. Bark bread, that's very kind of you. So this is a refugee camp, and uh, the indication from that initial uh, initial exchange there is that there will be a bunch of missions available from these people if they're not already to uh, locate locate loved ones around Novia, which I suppose is a excellent getting started quest type deal. So. Before various refugees were dotted around the town, now now they're at this camp. So just like with the uh, the merchant and the blacksmith, they're, they're located in a um, a proper area. Is that the, not really the phrase I'm looking for? But you know, a believable plot relevant area. Is that better? I don't know. Anyway, let's head out into uh, Novia and have a look. Oh, I've just got a point of interest. How exciting! And today we look at some of the other rather exciting, exciting new stuff. So, shouldn't take too long. There we go. Right, that's pretty dark. Well, I just let's just show you. Uh, there's an option now to turn off the translated town names. So if you can read the runes, you don't need to bother with all that horrible English language stuff. Me, I like the English language stuff much easier. Right, now, this, as you can see, is the sky. And this is a new feature of this release. Not just that there is a sky, but there are actual... Uh, celestial bodies in place 
and uh, ooh, it looks like a sort of chew toy for a dog doesn't it but there you go and these things are actually moving around now I'll draw your attention to this uh, a moon and die September 15 summer uh, 462 post post breaking or something midnight waning crescent moon so there is there is a time uh, you know a persistent a persistent state in the world the time goes on it, um, it goes on in time with you know earth time but at the rate of one hour, uh, one hour in 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 Earth in in the in the real world, I suppose, is equivalent to one day in in Shadowy Avatar. So I think that works out. Each year of uh, real time will be twenty six years in game. So there's that. The other exciting thing about this is that um, not only is the sky there to look at and has functional orbital mechanics, celestial bodies moving around and stuff, but that will actually have an impact on the game. So I'm not entirely... I couldn't tell you what the... Um, what the, uh, uh, the... the astronomical bodies are called here, but... Uh, so imagine that you can only enchant a particular bit of armor when when mars is in venus or whatever the astrological astrological terms are so the, the planets have to be aligned to do some particular enchantments and stuff like that so you will therefore only get the opportunity to do particularly special things uh every so often when when the planets align which is actually a uh, pretty cool if you you know if you're a dedicated uh, player of the game, you can uh, you can plot out the uh, the the motion of the planets and figure out when you want to uh, when you want to be online to craft some rare item to uh, you know and sell it for millions, I suppose, or use it to slay some. Some special beast. It'll be it'll be quite cool, I think. So let me just. I, I I've done some preparation. So I've got a list of things to check off now. The other thing in the last release, this uh, they introduced the whole camera control in the overworld. Part of the point of that is so you can look at the sky and do astronomy, uh, but you could zoom right in to you know your character's butt. And it made things look a little silly. Uh, so now you see, I can, although I can zoom out and take in the full sky, this is as close as I can zoom in. Ooh, let's have some light. So that's, um, that's, let's just check off the things I've discussed already. So there are some I want to in this video. Uh, I'm going to trundle up to the north. Um, there are some things worth talking about in some of the uh, scenes. Uh, Science bridge, I'm trying to find the bridge in the dark. There we go. So. If I can figure out where am I? All right, Silas Bridge is actually let's go into Silas Bridge because that's one of the areas. So there's, there's been there's been a load of updates um, to do with uh, monster spawning and resource spawning, uh, and it's it's in particular maps. And Solace Bridge, I'm checking the email. Solace Bridge is one of the one of the maps. So the way it worked before, it was uh, fairly dull and interesting in that, you know, there were areas where skeletons spawned and when you went there, there'd be skeletons there. And there'd be areas where the where the resources spawned. Oh, skeleton corpse. And, and stuff like that. And generally when you went there, they'd be there. And they would respawn on a timer. Now, the way the way it's different now... 
Oh, there's some bloke down there. What's he fighting? Is that... There, there's... Oh, there we go. Let's fight something. Is there will be... Basically, there'll be lots of potential spawns. Uh, we're going to make short work of him, aren't we? He's going to come back to life, though. We'll talk about that in a bit. There'll be there'll be a lot of oh no, maybe he isn't. Let's loot him then. There we go. There'll be a lot of potential spawns, but only a third of them will be active at any particular time. Um, another nice thing about this is that what's that? That's a tree stump. Hey, look, it's daylight. Another nice thing about this is that several of the, the spawn areas will overlap. So things that are natural enemies, like, like wolves and skeletons, have a chance of spawning on top of each other. And uh, and, and therefore, as you come across them, as you come across them, they, they might be fighting each other, and you can sort of... Oops. And you can sneak around and, uh, you know, do whatever. Right. So. Uh, not very, not very good news. So another new thing in this release, apart from the spawns. Uh, put the sword away, you fool. There we go. Apart from the spawns. I've lost the thread I was talking about now. Is oh yes, the combat animations and uh, and sound effects. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the sound effects. It does seem to be a bit uh, hit and miss the volume controls in this game. So I'm just wandering around to see if there's any resources here. Doesn't look like it. Hey, there's lots of skeletons. So just pay attention now. There we go. Come here, you. So I don't know if you really saw the improved animations, but let me tell you, they were there. Um, oh, watch her right. So, another new thing in this release is the way there's been a lot of uh, focus on combat in the release. Um, in this release. So, you'll have noticed I've got, I have the, uh, I have the dynamic uh, deck. And basically what happens is things pop up randomly on any of your slots. And, uh, and, and you have to pick them. Uh, does that make any difference to me? Very really slow, fastest. But one thing you can do now is keep the dynamic deck, which lets you do the combos and stuff, which uh, I will I will get to in a minute. Uh, let's do let's get the thing now. Let's not show the unavailable ones. Uh, so I can. So I can put double slash here. All right, and I need to put one of them, and then with double slash and thrust, thrust. There we go, thrust here. So now what will happen is, although the deck is still randomly dealt, thrust will always come up in slot two, and double slash will always come in slot one. So let's see. And then I want to have, uh, so let's do rend, rend there, and whirling, whirling, who do you want it? So there we go. So I've always got that combo. Now flame, flame, 
flame fist there we go so we'll put flame fist there so i can combine it with that and then we'll put put sit what's it arrow where's my arrow flaming arrow flame, fire arrow there we go put a fire arrow on that as well Flame fist, what else have I got here? Immolation? Yes, let's have an immolation in that. And we might as well put Searing Ray there, right. But then I'll put my Death Ray. And my Death Touch there. So that I can combine them for that combo. And we'll put Healing Touch and Healing right at the end there. And let's see. Let's just mix these in. Parry, Repost. I don't really care where they go. I suppose I shouldn't even bother putting them in. Right, so now what should happen if we find something else to fight? Someone else to fight me. Let's trundle along. I'll keep that glyph thing open. Uh, Edward the Wanderer. Let's trundle back through this way. And now what should happen is that those glyphs will only appear on those slots, which should make it easier to manage you know what you what you expected to see. Let's see if the skeleton respawned inside the thing. Of course because it's a dynamic spawning, you don't know where they're gonna be. And the point of the dynamic spawning, the dynamic spawning applies to the resources as well. The point is that you can't now just camp one spot. You are you are forced to uh, explore the map to keep on keep on doing stuff. You can't just say, right, well, I'll sit here until this iron ore comes back, and uh, then I'll go for it. Rabbits. More rabbits. I'm not going to attack a rabbit. Oh, there we go, a brown bear. Let's attack the brown bear. Alright, so you see Death Ray came up there. Alright, and perfect. So, another change. So before... Yeah, he's on fire. Before, if a spell fizzled, you would still spin all oh, the combat camp up there. I didn't have time to, uh, to implement it. You would still spend all the time casting it, and then it would fizzle, which is a bit annoying. And now, oh, Iron Vein, let's go. Ooh, Meticulous Collection. That didn't work last time. Meticulous Collection gives you two chances of uh, getting stuff from a uh, from a resource node. And it didn't work before, but now apparently it's been fixed. Oh, now I can't get out. There we go. So yeah. So you notice there that all of my all of my things all of my things came up in the slots I'd assigned them to, although my deck was still dynamic as I was doing it. Um, it's probably a waste of time at this point trying to find some more combat around here. So I'm going to head on back out into the overworld map, and uh, I'm going to basically head up north to um, Paxlair, the player in town, and, uh, and and talk about talk about some of the other new things that will go past on the way. Right, I've talked about most of this now, but I was planning to talk about. So we're on Solace Bridge, it's now daytime. There's a site. So I want to head north.
Uh, I want to cross the bridge, please. There we go. So, I explained the combat. You just have to take my word for it. Now, I'm going to... I might get lost at this point, which will be highly amusing. But, you know, I can always edit the video afterwards. Make it look like I'm just superstar. Who knows where it's going. Oh, well. Have some more combat. Let's see if we can get some combos going this time. Oh, it's a bear. Alright, so that worked. Flame fist. Boom. Repost. Yeah, well, you're toast, aren't you? We will get my crafting experience on upwards. Go on, take your sword out. Fizzled. So, although it fizzles, it still uses up. Oh, yeah, that's better. It still uses up mana. So let's see if we get any combos to come up before he dies. No, he's just going to die. Oh, there's one. Ugh, too late. Too late. I just want to do one combo. That's all I want to do. Since I figured out how to do it all. In the last release. Alright, there's another bear. Let's have another go. Let's parry him. I'll not set him on fire this time. Might give it longer for a, a combo to come up. No. No, he's going to die. Oh well. Ugh, it always comes up just after they die. You do the combo and you just drag the one onto the other and uh, it does an extra special move. It's pretty cool, now that I've figured out how to do it. Anyway, let's head on up north. Um, now, while we're waiting for stuff to load, I'll kill some skeletons earlier. Now, in the last release, they did their uh, the first... The first pass of uh, undead creatures respawning if you didn't kill them with magic. Uh, in this release, they've refined all that a little bit. In that, undead creatures, the chance of the chance they have of respawning is proportional to what level they are. So, uh, you know, low-level skeletons like we were killing there around the. Uh, Around the around saw this bridge. They're pretty unlikely to uh, to come back to life, but higher level stuff, like presumably we'll see on uh, on the grand tour for this release, will will be much more likely to uh, to spawn. Right now, the reason I came this way, although I may have made a mistake. In, uh, in, no, I've misunderstood. I might have to check my notes at this point. Southern Grunfall Barons. So, uh, in the, in the last release, Pax Leia was the, uh, first player owned town. In this release, there is another player owned town. I don't know what's it called. Let me tell you. I'm just looking now. Vengeance. The northern end of the Grunwald Desert. Yeah, it so says. Now, Vengeance is a player and town which is also an open PvP area. So I'm not going to go in it, even if I do find it. 
because I'm not really into the PvP. But I presume then it should be over here. Okay, I can't see it. Let's trundle up to the top of the hill. Can't see it here. So I may have to find that later. Perhaps we'll come across it in a different video. And definitely at the northern end of the uh, Involved, does it? No, you can't see it. Now, this is where I'll go a little bit hazy. I'm going to head off the Pax layer and finish the video there. Um, now, I do know Pax Lair is approximately in this direction, but I've only walked there once. So, it could be we have uh, a lot of aimless wandering around to finish off the video. Hopefully not. Oh, I've been disconnected from something. Oh, what's this? Well, that's not Pax Lair anyway. Let's run back down the coast a bit. Is that I think it is? I think that's the castle that we did on a previous Grand Tour, which you used to have to get through by teleport. There's Pax Layer. In the distance. I'm walking quite slowly now though, because I'm not on a road. I'm basically wandering down the beach. So I've probably rabbited on for long enough. There might be something going on in Pax Layer though. It's, it's worth, uh, worth going to have a look at. So what I'll do is I arrive here in Pax Lair, as it says, is uh, either I'll end the video now, or if I find something interesting in Pax Lair to look at, I will be extending it uh, to show you that. Let's go and have a look. So, while it's loading, I'll just wrap up. This is Tradley Avatar Release 18, uh, pre-alpha. New features, mostly combat stuff, uh, trying to make the combat more interesting and rounded before they pile a bunch of new features on it. Also, the astronomy and uh, nighttime sky, which is all pretty cool. I'm just going to wander into Pax Layer. I think I'm going the right way for the, uh, you know, the pub and the theatre and all that. I could be wrong. First wish you'll soon see. If there's nobody around then you won't be seeing this bit of the video. Yeah, the ship's in the port. Now what I think is that you come this way and then go up here. Oh, 
lots of stuff popping into view as we run along the road. This does look sort of promising. Yeah, there's a fountain and everything. This is nice. Someone's hobbit home. Ah, there we go. So, here is the, uh, here's the theatre. Oh, I'm disconnected again from the network. Why am I getting disconnected? Why am I getting disconnected anyway? So that's the theatre, I think. You should do a tour. This is the uh, the pub. Or a tavern, I suppose it's called. But there's nobody around. Oopsie. Well, it's too laggy for me to get in the door. Nobody around right now. Greenhouse. But there will be events and packs there all over the weekend. It's worth checking out. Oh, there's a Pax Lair tour guide and a town crier. So I presume this is part of the Grand Grand Tour. I've not even checked it out yet. But cool. Uh, I will be doing my uh, Grand Tour videos over the weekend. You can see it's like a uh, Robin Hood hat this time. That he's wearing. Let's give him some illumination. Looks, looks quite cool. I am missing one of my uh, one of my rewards, but I've uh, put a uh, support request in. So hopefully, I'll be getting it soon. But yes, nice, nice Robin Hood hat. Grand tour. So there we go. To wrap it up again. Uh, R18, lots of new features for combat, uh, lots of uh, interesting things to come with the astronomy and the crafting. And uh, I, if you're playing Travel the Avatar, I might see you online at some point this weekend.